Larry Hanboy, and I was born in Promise, South Dakota. I was born in Oceanside in Nancy, South Dakota, but I lived in Promise, South Dakota. So from there, I went to uh, grade school in Whitehorse. Mm -hmm. Went to Shine River, Shiny Beach High School until '64. I went to the service. Then I got out in '69 and came back to Rapid and came to Rapid and I was fooling around there for a while and then I moved back to Butte and that's where I met my cousin, sister and mom down on Maverland. They conned me. Did they? Uh, they said, well, could you drive with us? We'll be back in a couple of days. I never returned. <laughs> so that's is that how you got is that how you got started? That's how I got started with 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 movement. Okay. So and when you say the movement, what are you referring to? Well, I stayed in the movement, and then I think of my first involvement with it was it was called was up in Minnesota. And then we came back, and then I was driving went down to Maple Land, and her husband said, "What's the smell at the time?" Yeah, we were going, smells? Yeah, we were going here and there. All, so I don't half the place I was going to, I don't would know what to remember now. Mm. But then I ended up, anyway, we ended up going to, I think, Red Cabal, and that's where the, the thing took place, and we do our, that's where the demonstration all started. Mm -hmm. And Rapid City, and Sturgis, Custer, then went in and then back to Sioux Falls. Then I returned back to Rapid, and that's more or less my, I see there they are, and I didn't do, do too much more. That was it, and I'm still with them, but you know, I don't do as much as I used to. Yeah, so you started off driving them, yeah, just right? Yeah, be a driver, yeah. So, and then, so, you know, your hat says security. Everybody knows you've been security for eight, the American for Indian movement. For 51 years. For, for 51 years, okay. Um, how did the, how did that come about? Is it just the role that you wanted? No, we were going, we were going to Washington D.C. in 1972, I think it was the next one. We were going to the BIA, BIA building, and we got to Minnesota, and then Ted Means, Russ, Russ Means' brother, was the state coordinator of South Dakota. Right. And so somebody got talking up there, and they said, "Well, I recommend Larry Hamboy to be the security." So that was how I got started. Mm -hmm. So I was on security on D to watch DC, and after that, just mm -hmm. so you went on the, the the was it the Trail of Broken Trees? Trees, yes. Tell me, um, so who did you travel with to DC as well, the? Well, I was I was more of the driver here and there, here and there. So mm -hmm. wasn't just one person, you know. Different cars I'd drive, you know. Go. Okay. And when you were, um, so were you inside the building for the whole time? What happened? Tell me a little bit about. Do you what you remember about getting to DC? Well, I went to DC and we. Well, I was running to just keep me we pretty well calmed out, and a, a few guys went in the building. Well, they put us in their church first. What was that like? Yeah, so then we were there for a while, then people started complaining because, I mean, they had rats, <laughs> bigger than they jumped right around in their church. And we had a lot of elderly people in there. So that's when Rusty said, well, I'll go to the BIA building and ask them for better uh, sleeping quarters. Mm -hmm. Well, somehow that didn't work out. And they started, they canceled, I think, three guys. So then uh, we just took over the building and it wasn't, there was nothing really done because everybody stayed in one area. Mm -hmm. And then, then the cops showed up and then things went, but then they couldn't control it. I mean, people, you know, just, well, here comes the cops and yeah. so they, it was hard to control a lot of people. But. Were you in a position? because you were asked to be security, where you were trying to keep calm people down? Or what were you doing in that position? Well, I had to line people up, you know. Here were the cops outside outside the building. Mm -hmm. So I had to make sure that our people were taken care of. So 
we made a deal with them that the elderly people would leave. Okay. And the younger people would stay. Well, so then the cops wouldn't really let us relax. We just laid out and here come the cops, they started coming to the building. I get everybody up, all ready to go. Mm -hmm. We had to comfort it and come again. They'd back away. We laid back down, mm. they'd come again. So it was, uh, That's stressful. It was kind of rugged there, but you know, your people were getting kind of irritated over what was happening. Yeah. Well, that's how you get people to, that's how you get people to, you know, get violent, right? They're trying to pre press you guys. Well, they were pressing us into a point where it was coming to that, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I wasn't in really no position to make any kind of decisions as far as what was happening. Mm -hmm. I just took care of the people, that was my job. So. Right. So, I know you've been involved in a lot of things that I could ask you about. I'm going to jump around a little bit. Okay. Um, tell me about how, the, the two areas I want people to know more about is Wounded Knee, and then after Wounded Knee, every, so much happens, right? That uh, the, the Treaty Council getting started, and all of the things that go on after that. So I was going to ask you some specific mm -hmm. questions and see what you can remember from that. Um, but maybe if you could just tell me about how you, how did you get into Wounded Knee? Well, like I said, I was traveling all of Madonna and Maryland. And so that's okay then. Well, and somehow we ended up in Red Scout before they had a meeting at the Chisong's place, uh, Chisong's house. We were all down there and we had a, the so-called aim rodeo. <laughs> That's where Dennis Mike rode a horse and all that. And we did all that. Mm -hmm. And then, well, then I used to drive Dennis or Russ to Faith to make phone calls. I don't know who they were getting done with the clients and back what. To Faith? So we stayed there. Okay. And we, then they were, they, you know, I wasn't in the meeting. I just made things just ran the security there. So I didn't know what was really going on at that time. And then so, anyway, we ended up in this while we're going. So I, then Russell asked me, he said, Larry, can you go down to Pine Ridge? Mm -hmm. And just check things out, make sure it was live. We had to go to Pine Ridge, check things out. I think Russell was running for travel timber at that time. I wouldn't, well, it's funny, we, we were down there. Well, I didn't run for travel timber, but we were down there back and forth. And somehow we had Somehow we ended up in Calico Hall. In Pine Ridge. Okay, so you did go to Calico Hall. So Calico, we were there. And we stayed there, I think, for a couple of days, and then they had meetings with the, the elderly people there. The old, old elderly people there. Frank Cruz, Crow, and all that in the, the Elmwood camp, and Grass was there, were all there. Anyway, again, I wasn't in the meeting. Mm -hmm. I was on the outside doing Red Scared again. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I was there and toward, I think was toward the end of the meeting, I was walking by the building and here come <laughs> four or five elderly men that should have been in the meeting voting, trying to crawl out the window. What? So then I said, wait now. So I turned around, went back in, and I told Russ, I, I, heard these, I caught these guys trying to get out. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so then, I wasn't old, I didn't want to know what was going on, but I just thought there's the guys that I caught. So anyway, somewhere along the road, around the road there, we... <coughs> Russ came out and said, Larry, get everybody together. He said, we're going to a pork can for a powwow. So that was my thing, we were going to a powwow. Okay. So I got everybody lined up and lined up in the car, and we left. We went down to Pine Ridge. And then we came in down to the porcupine and the road going towards one of the knee. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I was like in the almost the last of the, the last of the car. Somehow we pulled in the wounded knee. So what what's going on here now? Okay. Then I heard put the glasses breaking on the out and the elderly people were bringing all there. the the couple of gildersleeves out of there. Mm -hmm. The gildersleeves? Yeah, so anyway yeah. there then a few things, Charlie Magic on here and there, but they didn't come out down. So anyway, we, they just took Russ and I mean, the, uh, the guillotines out there, and they weren't harmed anything. And then we then they stayed, 
Kentucky Booboo Cone again. He's sitting mm -hmm. with his, his up all night. And the next day, I think, was still roaming around there with a lot of people up to the church and a lot of people down the, the village there. So then we just started in there. Mm -hmm. And then I think it was after two weeks and uh, after a week or a week or two weeks, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. Somehow they got me to deal with with the tribe, the tribe, the tribe there, so we got to leave. But then people left, a lot of people left the camp. Uh, the tent that it was over. Well, anyway, we had a, a van go towards Manderson, and then they came flying back, and they said it was a big old buildup of federal marshals. Ah, uh, so Man this is two weeks in after? So, uh, yeah, so that was that two days left, anyway. That's when my other one and, and, and a few other ones, that shot right on, that's when that federal marshal got hit. He got shot, that was just a blind shot who did that. And anyway, so he got hit. So then we came, they came back to the camp and they told us what was going on. So then we built a, built a spear, that's when we dug in. Okay. That's when we dug in for the camp and made our bunkers here and there. So was that like, a f that was a few weeks into March then? Yeah, so anyways, after that, he said, I became what as a night security okay. to run uh, people on the streets. And Stan Holder took over the job of running security. I mean, mm. doing his daytime thing. So I played the night role, so okay. I took a night part, and he took the day part. So did, in Wounded Knee, if you were on the night security, did you, a lot of people packed in at night? A lot of people, we, we put us up here and there in that round church and mm -hmm. the church upstairs on top and then the Gillespie's homes they were made in and I think mm -hmm. one of the major headquarters there and then I think the, one of the houses were made in the medic place. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's how it was, they got over the corner stayed off in the training post. Became a pretty good sleeping quarters. So I had meetings there and Is that did you where quarters. did you sleep? I slept in the medic court was made in the Took care of that part of that. That's why I And was the medic station, um, where was where was that? Was it wasn't in the church, but no, it was. The, the main building here was the was the church. The there was. Mm -hmm. Right across the street, kind of kids going to the street was with the give the, give the uh, people's homes. Yeah. So the main building was right there, and then was there, so that was headquarters, I guess, for the dinner's place. So. Okay. Did you um? Was there a certain bunker that you were with, or did you just go, you were all well, over? See, I, what I did is I ran, I, I didn't maintain any bunkers. Mm -hmm. I, did, I just worked from there to the round church, back over and up to the other church. That, that was my, that was my, that was my route. I see. So I had that bunker, I think it was a bunker on the bowl of that church. One towards Pine Ridge, one towards Manderson, Went towards Porcupine and went towards uh, with down south. That was that's where it was at. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean bunkers. Mm -hmm. When you said um, at the very start about wounded knee that some some guys were trying to crawl out of a window, were they were they headmen? You said they were they were fo people who were supposed to vote. Well, they're my elderly people. Yeah. So I you know I, I wouldn't know who, I couldn't remember names. Okay. Anymore. But they, but they were headmen who were supposed to they vote. Were the, they were the big people. They were men folks. Okay, <laughs> I just I, I I heard something about that before, and that that's really that's interesting. Um, so was what was a typical day in terms of the? Uh, did you have a weapon? Were you exchanging fire, yeah. or were <laughs> you just uh, trying? You know, I tell you one thing. It's really funny because I got. Take it, take it, to it, what do you call it, a grand jury thing I'm using? Mm -hmm. What the rifle I carried was a, was a, was a little 22 mm -hmm. rifle mm -hmm. that had no trigger to it. So, you know, that's what I carried. Right. So the picture they seen they think out of me. With the rifle. With the rifle with, 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 no, with no trigger. But it was the way they made the way the picture they took it. Like, oh, I had a, I had a weapon, but yeah, I had a weapon, but right. it didn't work. Right. 
So the grand jury, like, when they, when they asked me about that, I told them. You know, I, that right, I couldn't fire anybody. Yeah. Couldn't hurt nobody. So after, when did you leave Wounded Knee? Huh? When did you leave Wounded Knee? Well, I left Wounded Knee, say, about maybe three weeks before it ended. About three weeks before it ended. Okay. And then, um, so you were, you said you had a grand jury. So you had, uh, were you, when were you? When were you arre were you arrested or were no, you were just oh, asked no, to testify? Just, they come and they look for me. So I was working security at the Bingo Hall mm -hmm. when uh, that what's that Martin name from Pine Ridge? Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, he come in and they caught me there. Okay. They served me papers. I went to that grand jury. Then I went to another one down in uh, Kansas. I think it was Kansas, I and Dave Hill. And. Mm -hmm. uh, there, I, I and Dave Hill was talking, and Dave said, Dave Hill. Larry, you just, you weren't involved, they didn't, you weren't involved in anything really, really uh, big, you weren't in security, you weren't involved in anything. He just say what you want, because that way we can get out of it, because if we don't say anything, we'll probably end up in jail. So, so I, I, had no, I had really, there was nothing I could tell him. Mm -hmm. So you asked me about this and this, and I said, well, I wouldn't know. Cause, you know, cause all I know is that our emulators, which you know about, Russ and Dennis and Clyde, you know them. I told that, I was there with them, and Leonard Cole, I was there with them. I said, as far as them doing anything, I, I don't know. I said, I can't tell you that, because I was never in the big meetings that they held. I was never in them. I was more the outside. Mm. So I'm gonna, t I'm gonna took it to the people on the outside, and they didn't worry that the leadership do their thing. So I didn't, I wasn't, Get involved in that. Right. Whatever they said, we did, and that was what it was. Did you, were you involved, uh, did you go down to um, Lincoln, Nebraska for the, the treaty trial? No. I, okay. That you, part I wasn't involved in, I wasn't involved in that at all. The only thing that after Mooney happened, I came, we came back to Rapid and then uh, those that were involved in the Moody Knee, they took a bus to Oklahoma. Okay, with three of us getting busted, we went to, all went to Oklahoma. So I was in Oklahoma for like two months. Then I worked my way, then I went to Denver. Mm -hmm. Then I came back up to Rapid Edwards. So, after sort of avoiding arrest after Wounded Knee, um, when did, did you, were you involved in the Treaty Council getting going? No, I see. Anything after Wounded Knee happened, mm -hmm. I less was I wasn't involved in nothing like that. Mm -hmm. see, so I, you know, I can't really say what I was. The after Wounded Knee, I think it was, I think it was Super Bowl happened. I think mm -hmm. that was I think that, was, that was it. I think Denver City happened in the Super Bowl. If I'm mistaken. Mm -hmm. What was that? What was that demonstration about? Was well, that, that the there courthouse? Was, uh, over the trial of Sarah Barabal ah. in uh, Dave Hill, mm -hmm. and a few others that was involved in that Custer riot. From the Custer? Yeah, they were on trial there. Okay. So were I'm, you were you at Custer? How was I at Custer? Yeah. What was, uh, how would you describe Custer? Was it, uh, what was it like? Did, did you come into it and... Did it feel like an ambush? Did you bring, you know, like people describe Custer in all kinds of different ways. No, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't like that. So you went down there with, with a demonstration to show for social support for, the, for several of them got there on the trial. Right. Okay, I didn't go in the building again. Mm -hmm. I was on the outside. Anyway, they come out and the next thing I knew there was people crawling out the window. So I don't know what happened inside. Out of the courthouse. Yeah, out of the, inside the courthouse. I wouldn't know what happened inside, but mm. I came out the window. And then you started getting kind of a little, a little bit out of control there. Mm. But that's when they had Russ in the back and had him out going pass him around, a couple of passing him around. You know, mm. I get talked about Mr. Me and all that stuff, you know. We had handcuffed already, you see. So. Mm. so um, you so you've known Madonna for a long time. Well, that's my cousin, yeah. Okay, um, what was uh, what was she like as 
as a person then would you describe and how would you describe her 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 position in the movement because he was with Madonna that's my that's my relative with him Madonna I couldn't say I don't know if she's a she's a good sport she's a sport for the women and a lot of stuff that she did she said I wasn't wrong I see which a lot of stuff she does is that that's just where I'm at where Madonna did but Madonna was a I mean, speaker for them, but with the movement, so mm -hmm. I can't say well what she said on this. Sure, I just wondered what she was like. Well, she was, she, she could be a real hostile on everybody, but otherwise she's a nice person. Yeah, she's funny and intimidating. She's like crack on every <laughs> second there. Yeah. Did you um? So what? What kept you doing it for that time? Like, what is it that that you, that drew you to it. What, what did you like about it? What did it, how did it make you feel? About the movie? Yeah. Well, see, the whole thing about the movie, see, when it first started out, it was that it was, I just had no drinking, all this stuff, and then was fighting with the people. I understood that. I, but see, growing up in, in White Horse, it was cowboy country. So when you try to become a cowboy, and then tell, Madame guy, Madame guy showed up, you know that the name so. But we was at, we went to a bar in Lantry, mm -hmm. and I see my brother was there, David Thompson was there, and then Ted and Ted and the guys, the names, their guys were there. Well, I didn't know they were moving then. Mm -hmm. I knew they were. Anyway, so anyway, so anyway, Ted got into it with with my brother Butch. Got down so anyway, so then Madame, <laughs> he he put the boot behind him, behind my brother. Mm -hmm. And then she realized who it was. Mm -hmm. And you don't we it was too late, you don't kick the boot, you know. Yeah. But you know, that was just one of the things that we could get on, so mm -hmm. that's the first time I met the movement though, really. Mm -hmm. So that was a very different direction to go in than growing up well, in see, my, cowboy uh, country. Donald's mother was married to my uncle. See, Faith you know. was? Faith. Yeah, she was married to my uncle Charlie Phillips, so she was married to that Oh, Donald's yeah. Married to Kim that's they came back. Okay. Okay. Um, so, were you at um, were you at Standing Rock? No, not at Standing Rock because I had a I'm fighting cancer right now. Mm. And I'm sorry. I had some my lungs, three shots in my lungs. Mm. Okay, they went to radiation. I went to, but I wouldn't go to chemo. I went to chemo one time. They got me sick at night. Mm -hmm. I realized, no, if I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I want chemo. I don't want it. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, I got my brother-in-law, Dave West, and a few boys who got back in the interview. They prayed me, so I went for a checkup. They said, well, there you go, me up. When you go for a checkup, there's going to be no cancer. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, I went to cancer, and I found there's no cancer. So, I, I, that, I, had to, I had to really thank him with that, because mm -hmm. then I went back. So, now the last five years, four years, I go every six months. Okay. Okay, they, they go to the x-ray or the x-ray and it's okay. So I wanted to look at it a month ago and they all come out clear again. So I don't go back till well, January. Okay. The next checkup. But you're okay, you're I'm okay, okay now. I'm okay that way. See, but then I smoked so much, my, I screwed my thing with my throat, so yeah. I'm short of breath. And on the, my half a long ear. Mm. And so then you know, I'm really short of breath when I walk, so you know I can't walk that far anymore. But yeah. I hope that I'm still okay. okay. At 72, I'm alright. <laughs> You're doing great. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that the prayers worked. Yeah. That's you right. know. That's um, cool. Is there, um, yeah, is there anything else you want to add or share? Well, see, you know, if, if I get involved with, if I can get involved with something again, I could be there. I'd be there. See, like, but now see, I got my wife and I got a lot of grandchildren. I got like seven grandchildren. I got the other time they're like a year apart, and I'm taking care of them. So that kind of keeps me going. And I'm still running security because I work for SDK Security and Mobley Scout. So and I do L and I power off. So you know, I did that. That's what I still do on the side, you know. Mm -hmm. But not as long as I. And then what I'm planning to do in October. Is get a run going for rust means. Nobody's done nothing for rust means. So on October 17th, when he, when he died, 
Well, in the hotel, I'm going to take it from his house on Porcupine. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go around 1863, he's all I was talking about. That'll be going down Yankton and back up along the river towards Mulberry. Standing Rock across up north and then go across the Standing Rock and then back down to Sturgis and back down to the and then back into Porcupine where Brother's home was at, in my run there. See, that, that's my intent as well. I was going to come off. That'll be really, See, that, really nice. I just I'm just uh, started out and mm -hmm. I just do it on my own and if people want to help, will help out, then that's mm -hmm. where it's going to be. So I'm going to get runners together and try to go. What was it like? Um, so you spent a lot of time with Russ Means. Mm -hmm. um, what was it? What was it like working with him? He's Russ such a is one guy that, that people couldn't leave him, couldn't leave him alone. Mm -hmm. So when you'd be a bodyguard with him, you had to be really on your toes because everybody wanted to be like this. Everybody wanted to be around Russ. Mm -hmm. So it was hard to keep him track and keep track of him. And then he liked to go around town with you, and you can't push this person away. Why well, you can't talk to him? Because He'll chew you up. Mm. He said, wait, wait, let him talk to me. So, you know, that's, that's what he was. And he was really a hard guy to watch. And he wanted to be watched, but he was hard to boy. He was hard to be watched. And that's yeah. Like yeah. Did you, is there anything that people don't know about him that you got to see that you want people to know about? Well, see, a lot of people, that, what I don't like is that you hear a lot of people talking about drugs and how they don't like him to condemn him. He was a drunk, he was that, he was that. Okay. Yeah, Russ did drink. I, I drank with Russ here with the movement. But Russ is, in a way, he used something a long time ago, the way you celebrate. Okay, we done things, it was our way of letting the frustration and stuff out in our good times. But with Russ, that's the way it was, you know. He'd be, be around Russ, took care of Russ. Cause I remember one time, though, we were at, at the Holiday Inn Rap, you know, and the Holiday Inn Rap was the Motel Rap League. And I, went, well, I left his room. I came back, there was a couple of girls there, but they were going to his pockets. Mm. So I was away waiting until they left. But I knew what he did. He, where he put his money, he put it inside his, his sock, his boot. So I took his boot off and I pulled the money out. Well, his ex wife, Betty, was there. Mm. I came out and rapping. But I didn't tell her I took his money. Anyway, he started to go, oh, darn. I went out my money. I said, well, I don't know. He said, I'm supposed to give that, give that to Betty. My wife, ex wife, I'm supposed to give it to her, give her some money. I waited till we got back to the house, and then I said, well, here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> give it back to him, though. But Russ is, Russ is a good guy to work with. Just, he's hard to get to work with, but he was, he was more or less, people wanted to be around him so much, you know, it's hard, yeah. it's hard to control him. But yeah. I traveled with him when he ran for the tribal chairman. When he ran with tribal chairman, see, I was bodyguard with Russ then. Mm -hmm. Then when he died, I was at the funeral with him. I had to sit in front of his tent while he got his ass for back in there. Mm. So, you know. Yeah, you were with him all, all the way. Rusty, all the Russ, all the white men with Russ, but different guys bodyguard, different guys guarding most of this, so, you know, you ever had to turn with him. Yeah.